Thank you. Well, what a, uh, what a welcome. Uh, that's incredible. Um, I would, would like just to say for the record that um, I'm still learning stuff. Uh, after 30 years in stock photography, I'm learning new things every single day. Uh, it's an amazing industry to be involved in, and uh, I'm lucky to have participated in some of the key changes that, that have happened. I just wanted to get a, just a brief perspective just before I begin the presentation. How many of you are with a stock agency? Oh, not many. Oh, OK. Um, well, I'm going to give you a sort of perspective of um, what, what to shoot and how to go about shooting from a perspective of a company that I'm working with presently called Robert Harding. Uh, Robert Harding uh, is an agency that's been going over 40 years. It's seen a lot of changes. Robert Harding uh, is and was a, a travel photographer. Uh, and the agency specializes in travel, nature, culture, and the environment. And it's not only images, it's also video as well. And the images are distributed in 80 plus countries all over the world. In fact, I think they're the largest independent uh, contributor of photography to agencies such as Getty and Shutterstock and, and, and even Adobe. And I think we're, we're, we're very happy to be associated with Adobe's creative plan. Um, so if, you, if you're going to consider uh, 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 making money out of, out, of, out of your photography, I mean, not all of you will, but some of you will, then you've got to consider you know, where do you want your images to be? You know, who do you want them to be with? Um, there's a lot happening in the world of stock. And in fact, I think it, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this. I think it's actually great that, that Adobe have, have entered into the marketplace because it's really shaken things up, I think, positively. Um, for, for creators, for people like you that are out there and creating for, for reasons which I'll explain later on in the presentation. Um, within the stock industry, very briefly, because I've only got some, something like 18 minutes to speak, um, massive amount of consolidation has taken part and place in stock photography over the last 20 years. It was originally a battleground, really, for two of the world's richest men, Mark Getty and Bill Gates, who essentially... Um, uh, took over around about 100 stock agencies and completely uh, reformed uh, a, what was a, a sort of mom and pop type operation. Um, so the biggest agency in the world today is Getty Images. Uh, Corbis was recently, I think, sold to Getty. Then you've got Shutterstock. But you've also got around about 1,000 other agencies that are out there, some of them very, very small, but highly, highly specialized. So you don't just have to go with the big guys. So consider very carefully where your home is going to be for your images. The whole prices, pricing and licensing... Oh, sorry. I don't know if some of you couldn't hear me, I don't think. Sorry. Um, the whole uh, pricing and licensing side of, of stock photography has undergone an enormous revolution. Um, and what I would say to you very briefly, because it's a, a massively complex subject, so whether you have your images in microstock or subscription or rights managed or royalty free, is my best advice that I give all photographers is put a little bit of it in all the different models that are out there. So that, you know, I, I meet so many photographers sometimes who say, I only want to be rights managed, I only want to be this, I only want to be that. And sometimes they, they're cutting off revenue uh, to themselves. But also, it's a learning process as well, because the way of distributing and selling images and videos is continually changing. Social media has had a massive impact on, on stock photography. The biggest com one of the biggest companies that ha that's had that massive inst uh, effect is Instagram. It's not actually part at the moment of the stock photography community, but the, the, the clients have really bought into uh, wanting to have that sort of authentic uh, feel to photography that's largely been driven uh, you know, by Instagram. I, I certainly watch them very, very carefully in terms of potentially being a, a big competitor to Adobe. Um, there's loads of choice out there. There's lots and lots of agencies. Um, but what I would say to you is, is that if you are considering shooting stock photography, th think about the end user. Um, the, the amount of images I see sometimes um, at the agencies that I've worked on, work, they're, they're great pictures, but they're, they're simply un unusable. You know, they're, they're unsaleable. Um, so think, think about the end user. Think about how somebody is going to use your image uh, going forward in the future. So think about the customer. And uh, this is actually from the Robert Harding perspective um, of, of how we work with our photographers. I gave this presentation recently in Birmingham, and I've got a bit of a road show ongoing at the moment with his photographers, uh, explaining to them that you know, clients are looking for concepts, and, and at the same time, thinking about keywords. 
You know, what, what's, what, what's the, how's my image going to be found? What, what, there's millions and millions of images out there, and potentially whatever platform you decide to go on, your images have got to come to the top. So they've got to be relevantly keyworded, but they've got, obviously you've got to shoot the right image in the first place. So here are just a few uh, from Robert's collection uh, with the various concepts, and which also happen to be keywords as well. Actually, I should mention Robert is a, a Robert Honey is an editorial picture agency uh, with lots of clients in that in that editorial marketplace. So here's some of the, and all these images have sold numerous times. Actually, that should have gone right at the end, by the way. So I did have some difficulty moving it around at the last minute of my presentation. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about great pictures. Um, one of the key themes for travel, and I know some of you do travel, um, and you'll probably be out there uh, over the summer, is, is adventure. And these are some of the recent acquisi uh, acquisitions uh, additions to the Robert Harding Agency uh, on that particular theme. I'm sure some of them have been through Lightroom on their, on their journey to us. That's probably one of the best selling shots in the agency, sold over 500 times. Detail as well is very important. I've seen on a couple of the presentations that are going to be given um, later. Uh, the, what tends to happen with uh, particularly travel photographers is they run around shooting just pictures of destinations all the time. Well, everybody's doing that. So clients are particularly interested in the detail of particular locations that give a flavor of the place that you're in. So you're putting the end user, the, the client, the customer, in, in that particular image. And these images sell particularly well. Uh, model releases are also important as well. I'm going to come on to model releases uh, in, a, in a second. Uh, one of the specializations of Robert's agency is nature. As well. So for those of you, and for those of you that do your own keywording, um, uh, there are some agencies that will actually do the keywording for you as well. Uh, Roberts is one of those agencies. I, d I don't know whether Adobe do, but some of the other smaller specialist agencies will help you along with keywording. This particular image uh, is from an award-winning photographer, it was David Gibbon, that recently won a uh, Stock Photography Industry Award in uh, Zagreb, and we've got high hopes for its earning potential going forward. The seal pup got away, by the way. It didn't, it didn't get eaten. Observational travel as well is a, is a, is a, is a huge seller uh, in, uh, in, in stock photography. And you saw a couple of images earlier being, being worked on. And I would say as well, you know, consider carefully uh, which agency you go with in terms of uh, the percentages that they're, you know, that they're giving to you. You know, commission, actually photographer commission percentages, i.e. the percentage of what you receive eventually from a sale has been steadily declining, particularly on... Uh, some of the major, major platforms. And I think stock photography, to a certain extent, has gone through a bit of a rough patch in the last few years where certain photographers have not have actually basically given up shooting. But I would say keep, keep out there and keep shooting, but also watch very carefully the commission rate that you, that you deserve for your, for your images, for your creativity. Don't undersell yourselves by any stretch of the imagination. And tr the final there is travel lifestyle, which again is a is a big is a is a huge seller. And if you get it right, of course, uh, you know your images can be used in in advertising, in in double page spreads, uh, major major usages for uh, for large large brand global brands. Again, model releases absolutely. Absolutely key. Um, it's obviously difficult in a, in a crowded world to get your images noticed. I'm absolutely certain that I'm speaking to one of the most tech-savvy audiences I've, I've ever spoken to. So you don't need to tell me about, tell you, sorry, about Instagram, the importance of, uh, of getting your images up there, Pinterest, obviously Twitter as well. In fact, somebody told me the other day that uh, the primary use of Twitter is actually to ask questions. 
is not to promote, something like that. 52% of tweets are questions, which was fascinating. Uh, it's one of our recent photographer conferences that we did. Um, yeah, choosing the, choosing the right agency is obviously very, very critical. There are some big beasts out there. Um, I obviously can't say their name because I think this presentation is being recorded, or their names. Um, I'll come on to those in a minute. Hel sorry, help and support, very important. I've forgotten to talk to you about copyright. You need model releases. Uh, there's standard industry model releases now everywhere. You can get them from our site. You can get them from other picture agency sites as well. Uh, I put this particular slide in because when I gave this pr original presentation, I was in b at the Birmingham at the photography show, and it says Rudel and Money. We were talking about earnings, and uh, we were in a presentation suite called the Toot Suite. So I couldn't really resist, really. So there's a reason why that's in there. Um, coming back to the agencies, you know, get in touch with them. Make sure that they talk to you. Uh, a lot of agencies have pushed photographers away. They've pushed creators away um, in favor of just sending them emails about what they think they're looking for, what their client's looking for. You know, get personal with an agency. Speak to your editor. Uh, speak to the salespeople and get to understand what it is that they're looking for. And we produce creative briefs for photographers. And whatever agency you go with, get them to produce a creative brief for you. Otherwise, you're, you're, shooting, you're shooting in the dark. You, know, you really are. As I said, you could go with some of the big beasts uh, that are out there. No guessing who this image uh, represents. I couldn't possibly say their name. Uh, there's another one. That's you, by the way. Now, obviously, we've had an, a recent new entrant into uh, the world of stock photography. So uh, I guess this is Adobe. Hasn't quite decided what it's going to be yet. So what will it grow up to be? I don't know. But at Robert Harding, we think we're a, we think we're a cheater. We're small, we're fast, we're lean. In fact, we're competitors of, uh, of Adobe. But I worked it out the other day. I think we're one one thousandth of the size. So uh, no, no direct threat at the moment, I don't think. But capable of great speed. Um, having met thousands of photographers now, uh, I, I sort of try to sort of distill... Um, I sort of took a, took a leaf out of Cicero's book, I think it was. It's called The Power of Three. Um, and it, what is it that really makes a su successful stock photographer? And th these are my, my thoughts about the three, the three main qualities that you, know, that, that you need. Um, you've got to try and create your own unique visual signature. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, I I'm assuming that you're all competent creators and shooters. Um, I would say a lot of photography that I see uh, that comes across my sort of desk is, is not a lot of tools have been used to enhance those images. And you're going to see some great tools tonight from the guys at Adobe. I would say don't, don't overwork the images, but certainly work with your images and create your own visual signature, your own unit that, that's you. Don't replicate other people's work. Don't copy other people um, because it, it'll get you nowhere and you, you, you simply won't you won't get the earnings that you deserve. So create your own visual signature. Create and have your own compelling aesthetic vision as well. At the end of the day, if you want to make money in stock, somebody's got to like your picture, but somebody's got to buy it. Somebody's got to normally convince a committee of other people that your picture is better than somebody else's. So you've got to have a compelling sort of aesthetic, aesthetic vision. And you've also got to have adaptability and persistence. You, the most successful stock photographers in the world are obsessives, in a way. They, they, they live, eat, and breathe photography. Uh, and, and in a way, it's their own personal journey. They're not really in competition with each other, particularly all the travel photographers that we represent. They rarely ever meet, other than when we actually uh, put, them, you know, put them in a room together. But it's that, it's that adaptability that I talked about earlier. Be prepared to have your images being sold at different price points in the marketplace, but also with different licensing models as well. Don't, don't be a person that says no all the time. You've got to try these things out. They may not be successful, but some of them could be very successful. So keep, keep, keep an open mind as to, uh, as to your licensing models and what you're going to be doing. So if you get it right, it can, it can be great fun. Um, I'm with Robert Harding. Uh, Robert uh, is now in his 42nd year, he's still out there, still shooting, that is him. Uh, and 
I'd like to thank finally all of the photographers that gave me their permission to put their wonderful images in this presentation. So thank you very much for listening. And it says that I've got four minutes and 48 seconds. So I'm very happy to take questions if we're allowed to. Far away. A couple, if you want. Yeah. And we're just going to try and get a mic to you, I think. Have we got a mic available? No? Okay, I go on. We'll get here, actually. Go on. Yeah, sorry. Keep it brief and I'll repeat it on the. Yeah. 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 Well, um, you. I mean, we have. First of all, the language barriers there, but we have uh, 40 different languages on our, on our site, on our various sort of model releases. Um, and you can get them, our photographers do get them. Now, it depends, if you're suddenly going to start shooting crowds and crowds of people, it isn't going to happen, not in a million years. But if you're working with professional models or semi-professional models, or even street casting, and you have the model release, and it's written in the local language, then it's, it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can, you can do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our photographers do it all the time. Sometimes they're successful. Sometimes people go, look, no, it's not for me, and I don't want to do it. But, you know, try it. Well, what? Yeah, you, you can't get you can't get um, uh, model and property releases for, for for certain buildings, and and in fact that that particular area, particularly where the building is the principal, is the, really very much in the foreground of the image. The the IP owners and and it's sometimes it's the obviously it's the architects or the building owners will not give you permission to uh, to have that image absolutely. Back smack bang wallet right in the middle of your image. I mean, one good example would be um, the cheese grater building here in London. If you're doing a business shoot right outside the cheese grater, and the cheese grater was really, you know, was really very much in the forefront. I mean, you, you couldn't use that image even if you got model releases because you wouldn't get the property release. But if it's part of a skyline, if it's part of a general collection of buildings, then you're fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry? Yes. 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 Um, you, you, can, um, you can sell images for editorial use without model releases. Uh, it's, in the, it's when they're used for advertising and promoting products that you run into trouble. Oh, sorry. One... one. That's a great question. My, my belief is, is that you should be image exclusive with an agency. And, and this is where sometimes photographers have not done themselves any favors, because what they've done is they've spread their images, the same images, sister images as well, all over the place, different pricing models, different licensing models. Clients have become terrifically confused. Earnings have gone down, and everybody's lost out. So Robert Harding and a few other specialist agencies as well, we work on an image-exclusive basis. That image is with us. It's not with anybody else. And it's not, there's no, none of the sister images or similar images are with that other agency as well. But just as an, an additional answer to you, yes, you know, work with three or four agencies, but work with ones that are in different and trying different licensing models. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you and very much, Mike. Good. Okay.